Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best selling author, and the only three time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the podcast. This is your co-host, Seth Green. Today, I've got the good fortune to be joined by Chris Barkhurst from Barky AI the industry's first auction house AI model, which leverages over 25 AI models. Barky AI is the industry's first chat GBD consulting firm. Barky AI are experts in optimizing front end and back end systems to work with AI systems. Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Yes, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. All right. So let's go back in time. Uh, how did you get started? Well, I got started um, back in September. I was caught up with all the tech layoffs going on, and my um, wife was tired of me sitting around, just loafing around the house. And she said, hey, you've been working on this model for quite some time. Why don't you release it to the public? So um, with the, you know, I taught myself how to code an, an, an app, and we created the uh, Barky app. We released it to the Apple uh, App Store, and uh, that's how this whole thing started uh snowball well congratulations that's been very what were you doing before you said you got caught up in the round of tech layoffs what were you doing before you started barky uh, i was a director of data services for a, a tech consulting firm i've been in the data industry for almost 20 plus years awesome well congratulations on that now obviously ai super hot right now chat gbt you know hundreds of millions of users in record time why is Barky different? Well, Barky is so different because unlike other um, AI models, Barky is, think of Barky as like the uh, uh, kayak of AI models. We have developed a platform in which we can um, quickly assess other AI models to find the, the best response for your uh, prompt. So if you ask a question, and we can leverage all of the other models available out there such as ChatGPT, Hugging Face, um, uh, Bard, and see which response is best going to match your uh, question. And then based on what the consumer wants, speed, quality, um, cost, we can give you those results. Okay, so let me, let's dive a little deeper and let's, I want to make sure I understand this. So right now, let's say I could go to chat GPT and ask my question. I could go to Jasper if I have a, you know, a paid subscription and ask it to do something for me and many, many others. If I'm hearing you correctly, Barky, I'm asking Barky my question. Barky is then knows based on my question, hey, you don't want to use chat GPT for this. You want to use abc.com, go here. Does it then redirect me to the other place to get my answer or does it do it for me and serve me my answer from that platform? It is for you. Uh, without and you don't know any difference so and, it's almost like you've aggregated everything under one roof and how did you decide which platform i mean obviously chat tpt is one of the 800 pound gorilla in the room how did you decide all of the other dozens to include well we go out on a on a pretty much a weekly or bi-weekly basis and find all the different uh, ai models available because there's literally hundreds of models available um, and they get released, you know, almost on a daily basis. So we find out which models are hot, which models are performing well, and we bring them in under, a, under, under an umbrella. And then as well as, um, you know, we, we skip forward in the future, a few months, uh, we start to make our own, our own 
AI models based under a, a specific market. So um, back in um, uh, April, we actually started making our own models for specific markets um, for like sneakers, retail, um, you know, we did one for cannabis, uh, et cetera. So we started to make our own, our own, uh, our own models for those, uh, specific markets then. So we started doing that too. Congratulations. And, and just for our viewers and listeners, what, what, when you say we're making our own models, what does model mean to you? Models means that we're actually scraping the internet. We're actually going out and, uh, finding, um, you know, the 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 data the the data that we need uh that the client's requesting hey i would really, really like to have this information and we have a team that goes out and scrapes the internet for that information so for example uh retail for like jordan shoes um we go out and we scrape uh, as much of the internet as possible for all the information related to uh jordan shoes so we get as minute as how many lace how many stitches between the shoe between the tongue and the heel for a Jordan uh, Air Max Jordan 1. And we do that for each version of the shoe because um, sneaker heads want to know that information to determine if it's counterfeit or not. Um, we, we've all started doing this for a, a card grading service that we're launching here pretty soon to determine if a card is counterfeit or not because there's so much information about that. Um, so we're doing um, models based off of that information as well. So, I mean, we're making models for whatever the client is looking for. That's absolutely incredible. Now, how, if you've got over 25 other platforms under your umbrella now, how do you determine who's good at what? Uh, uh, for model-wise, uh, we basically assign everybody a score. So when you do a prompt and we, uh, we, we bounce it off the models, the models will determine, you know, that, that answer is based off a confidence score. So the higher the confidence score, the better that model is going to, um, the better the, the answer is. So if that model rises to the top, that's what we're going to give you. Now, I should say that this is based off what the client wants. So some of our other things we'll talk about later, such as um, our virtual agents, we don't want, we don't necessarily want the best quality, we want the best speed. So the model that delivers the best speed we want instead of the best quality. Um, so quality comes a second, speed comes first. So that's what we're looking for. So it's whatever the client wants. Sometimes the client wants the best cost. So we want the best, the one that runs the cheapest. So we're looking for best, uh, the least expensive um, model to run. So that's how we determine it. It's based off a number of different factors, which we can you know, slide to find the best fit for the client. And you mentioned, obviously, for the client a number of times. Who is an ideal client for you? Uh, we have clients across a number of verticals. We have clients, like I said before, in the, in the retail world, uh, usually there's small, medium businesses that um, they're not, you know, looking for a, an enterprise-wide solution. They're this, they have like a chat bot on their website, uh, or they have like a, a small manufacturing firm that they um just want people to visit their website and learn more about their their service. We have a couple of call centers that are medium to small, you know, 50 to the 150 agents that they're looking to offload some of their phone calls to and an overload capacity or overflow capacity. So that's that's what we're mainly targeting the small and medium um, uh, businesses at the time. And can you build, let's say, an internal chat bot? Um, where it can search my company database of knowledge and answer questions. Or if you had, you mentioned a call center, if I had someone who was on the phone asking a question, could you build a model where it could look up the answer for me and my, and all the resources we upload into it? Absolutely. Um, for example, um, we've done a, a help desk lot before where the, the, uh, this, the help desk people will actually type in the question that the uh, um, the customer is submitting and it'll give them the, all the steps that they need to follow step-by-step step for troubleshooting, as well as for the um, virtual agents or the uh, call center agents. Um, imagine being able to make a phone call to a help, uh, to a, a call center and never being able, never having to be held on hold or be transferred to another department. It's all handled in one shot. That's what our virtual agents are able to do. They can handle your phone call in one shot, 
first first rain pickup answer. Uh, hey, this is so and so from this company. How can I help you? I want to be able to order this, this, and this. No problem. Your order can be X, Y, Z. How do you want to take the payment? Done. No transfer. No hold. Easy as that. That is absolutely incredible. With all the constant changes right now, I mean, AI is probably undergoing the biggest growth and change in the marketing industry right now. How do you stay on top of all of that? Um, it's, it's difficult because every day there's a, a new competitor that comes out with a brand new uh, system or a brand new feature. So um, we, uh, we constantly have to adapt. That's what's so great about Barkey is that we have a team that is, not, is never afraid to say no, not afraid to take on a new, new endeavor. We're not afraid to just throw away what we currently have and start from, from, start from new. We're not afraid to say no to uh, whatever client comes in and says, hey, I have this, I have this brand new request. Um, can you take it on? And we're, we're not hesitant to say no. So, um, you know, this, for example, when you think of AI, you always think about tech. You always think about, um, you know, chat bots and stuff. You never think about an AI company taking on a sports grading um, line of business. So when the sports grading line of business came about, we're like, heck yeah, we'll take it on. We'll take it on full fledged. So, I mean, we got a stack. I mean, I got a stack of cards right here that need to be graded. And uh, we took that on. So we're taking that on right now. So that's, uh, that's something that we're really excited to do. That's awesome. So given all the success you've been able to achieve in such a short period of time, what's your biggest challenge now? Our biggest challenge right now is actually saying no to new customers. Uh, we have an influx of new customers coming in. Um, I mean, we we are in a, a private silent beta in which we're not uh, for this card grading thing, which is our, our new thing we just started plug out um, three three weeks ago, three or four weeks ago. Um, we we are in a silent private beta, which we only told maybe three dozen customers um, that we identified as these are people who are well-respected within the card grading community. They have a, a large amount of cards that they want to be graded. And um, somehow that um, got the word got out. My address got out into the card grading community. And now I have literally boxes of boxes of cards that need to be graded and sent out. So um, it is uh, is quite the challenge to to handle all that. On top well, of that. I mean, I would say too much business is a much better problem um, <laughs> than not enough business for sure. Yeah, absolutely. My my wife goes crazy when she gets a well. My post my 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 postal deliverer uh, goes crazy when she just hands me over this box of cards um, multiple times a week, and I'm like, I'm so sorry about this. <laughs> I mean, she just drags up her wagon with all these boxes. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Um, on top of that, we have um, call centers coming up and they're just saying, hey, um, we have this problem. Can you solve it? We have this problem. Can we solve it? And my business development managers are like, Chris, we need more help. We need more help. And I, I can't hire enough business development managers to, to handle the load of all the incoming leads. So, I mean, yeah, good businesses. I mean, lots of business is great. But I want to make sure that each of our, of our clients is, is satisfied and is successful. I don't want to, you know, make one client not successful. I want to make sure that each of them get the attention they they deserve. Absolutely. Well, your passion is obvious. What do you like best about what you're doing now? Well, you know, one of the things I, as I said before, is I want to make sure everybody's successful. So that's one of my passions is to uh, make sure they're very successful in whatever they want to accomplish. So that's one of our first things that uh, was one of the hallmarks and one of our rallying rallying cries at Barkey is to make sure that every um, you know, time that we talk to our clients or talk to um, you know a customer or whatever is to make sure that that contact is successful and make sure that the, uh, at the end of the day um, it's successful. And not just for our external clients, but for our internal team members as well. When we bring them in, um, I've always said that, um, you know, I don't like resumes. So when people bring me a resume, I don't even look at it. Um, and I, I, I tell my managers, I'm like, don't even look at the resume. 
um, look at them as a, as, a, as a whole and see if they have passion, see if they are willing to do the objectives necessary to make that client successful. And if they do, that's, you can't fake that. You can't fake that passion. You can fake uh, anything else. You can fake, you know, have the knowledge of AWS or fake the knowledge of having, of knowing Python and SQL and all that stuff, but you can't fake passion. And if somebody can, uh, if somebody can show you that passion and show you that they want to be successful and make other people successful, bring them in. And let's talk about, you know, we can figure, we can teach everybody how to code, but you just can't fake that passion that and wanting to help other people be successful. I love it. I greatly appreciate that. Um, we know your time's incredibly valuable. We greatly appreciate you spending some of it with us. For our folks watching and listening who want to learn about you and all things Barky, where is the best place for us to send them? Uh, the best place to go to is uh, uh, Barky.com. Uh, excuse me, BarkyAI.com. Um, as well as you can go to DownloadBarky.com to download our app. And they can always reach me at CEO at Barky, uh, BarkyAI.com. All right. Well, this has been Seth Green for Sharkpreneur with Chris Barkers. Chris, thanks again for joining us. All right, thank you. Thanks, sure. everybody, for watching or listening, and we will talk to you or see you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet, and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer. 49 faces looked to him in triumph. Over the last 12 months, they had each taken turns and promoted his business for a week at a time, driving over $987,342 in revenue. What if you had a network of 50 centers of influence who promoted your business every week for a year? Grab your copy of the number one Amazon best-selling book, The Ultimate Guide to Growing Your Business with a Podcast, at 33% off the Amazon price by going to ultimatepodcastbook.com. Again, that website for 33% off the Amazon price is ultimatepodcastbook.com.